I don't know about you guys, but Katie and her mission to show Jess the light is giving me life. I stunned you and saw me. I'm a stun. Yeah, but does it not worry you if Mal didn't get dumped? You two would never rekindle. Yeah, but she, there's a reason why she got dumped. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, reviewing Love Island Season 10, Episodes 20 and 21. Y'all have sent out a search and rescue. And I am so touched. <laughs> like, I'm just uh, like, oh, you guys make my heart so full. Like I got Twitter messages. I got Discord messages. I got Instagram DMs. Like y'all were like, where are you? Where did you go? Are you okay? Is everything all right? I am all right. I am fine. Just a little announcement. It's not really an announcement, but it's kind of like a for your information. I am moving across country in a few weeks, right? So sometimes when people want to do things with me because I'm leaving, I will oblige that more than I will do this. It's not say that, it's not to say that you won't get a video. It just might be late. And then when I actually do move, videos will definitely be late. And I'll let you know when I start the move and all that stuff so you're not like wondering where I'm at. I am still here, okay? Let's get into last episode. Let me do like a quick summary because today's episode was boring, so was that one, so it's great that they work together. Um just was annoying me. Just was annoying me. I felt like after the kiss sing challenge, she won and it kind of like, it blew some steam up her ass. I felt like she was seeking a lot of validation. And it's like, oh, not Montel thinking I was, um, thinking I was Leah. Oh, not Sammy going, oh, I said, okay, girl, all, all right, you did great. The men loved it. Like, I don't know. It's just. The tide for me is turning a little bit with dress and I'm sad because I like her, but sometimes I'm just like, oh, okay, all right. Uh, Mitch and Scott can't, ki yeah, Mitch and Scott can't kiss, yeah. Mm. Sorry, Catherine. Mal grew on me. She did, she did. I was getting used to the, the, oh, should I say that? That's not nice. She was growing on me. I'm just gonna leave it there, okay? Montel doesn't like Leah. He doesn't. He likes her physicality, but her characteristics, her values, her mentality, I don't, I don't, I don't see it. I don't see it. And, and it's very evident in the way that he compliments her and the way that he talks about her. It's always physical stuff. You know, the only non-physical thing that he says is you're my little princess. But beyond that, oh, I love her body. Oh, she's a wicked kisser. Or our physical chemistry is so great. I love your eyebrows. Yeah, he don't like that girl. Um, Whitney didn't want to be open. <laughs> I don't know why I have to fight for my life to convince y'all that she liked this man, but she liked it him, y'all. She liked it him. She said in the morning debrief, she had to save face and say, yeah, let's be open and explore other options. But she knew she didn't want to do that. She knew she didn't want to do that. However, it is a great thing that the episode ended the way that it did, because if Medi was still in the house going into Casa Amor, I don't know if Whitney was going to open herself to her fullest capacity, you know? She takes pride in being a loyal person, which is something to take pride in because loyalty is hard to find these days. Um, but unfortunately, it was to the wrong person, you know? We had let, okay, let me speak for myself. I had let a lot of things slide for Medi because I love Whitney, but also because I could understand some things just felt like a miscommunication. And then a lot of other things were microaggressions, if we're being honest, right? So yeah, I'm just like, it's a great attribute to have to want to stay loyal to something and put in your best effort. But honey, the, the efforts were put to the wrong human being, the wrong human being. And then um, Mal left as well. And here's the thing for me. I'm not surprised that Mal and Medi left, which is the surprise. This is what I feel is the first season where our votes actually matter don't make us vote and then you and then you put it in the hands of the islanders they don't know what we want we know what's best for them they don't know what's best for them come on now we see the full picture so we know what we are talking about and finally this season our votes matter and with that being said if you are on discord go to the love island channel and go to the pin message some precious gem of a soul of a person sent me a dm of how we who are outside of the UK can vote. Your votes actually matter this season. Guys, get on your Zoom, okay? You need to get on your Zoom. Let's talk about this episode. 
the episode starts with the girls trying to comfort uh, Whitney and just saying, hey, you're bottling, you're bottling a lot of feelings. Just let it out. Alicia, the last moments spent with Medi was positive moments. I can see you're really holding it in. I know, yeah. you need to be it was good. Yeah, come on. You can see it was real, fam. You actually could, didn't it? That's proper sad, bro. <laughs> it needed to happen. It needed to happen. I thought I was gonna cry seeing her cry, but I cried yesterday and that was enough tears, child. That was enough tears. Medi's not getting no more tears out of me. And I wasn't even crying for Medi. I was crying at the fact that she had lost a person who meant a lot to her. So unfortunate that it was Medi Charles. This woman said, can I come to Paris? Or am I invited to Paris? He said, yeah, you can come to Paris. Are you inviting her? Keep your invite. We don't wanna go there anyways, okay? We don't wanna go there anyways. I'm saying we because I would be tagging along for Whitney's sake, okay? She needs to see what's really going on with this man. Mm. And he's there encouraging her to, you know, find her love and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, that man don't care about her. He does not care about her. But I'm glad that the women realize she has been holding in a lot. And I think even with Medi, she was holding in a lot, you know? There were times when she felt like he wasn't being nice to her. And it took that challenge where he kissed down near every girl for her to say, do you not see that, like, you're mean. You are mean. Girl, he ain't gotta be mean to you no more. You have been released. Now that Mal is gone, Sammy feels like he can rekindle things with Jess. It's not a case of Mal gone, chat to Jess, you know? Like no, I know before that. Before the whole night started, I did leave that door open. Neither of us ever did shut that door. I'd, I'd be lying if, if I said that, like, um, I, was, I was done with Jess. The thing about this rekindling that doesn't make sense to me is the way that he felt about her before they were separated is this way he feels now. He is not going to be attracted to her the way that he's attracted to other women. That is point blank and the period. Jess does have a better personality than a lot of the women that he's been talking to. But when it comes to physical attractiveness, which Sammy weighs highly, that's the part you have to remember. With the situation of like um, Whitney and Medi, it's similar. However, they don't weigh looks the same way that Sammy does. And so if Sammy does not find this girl attractive naturally and he has to work towards that, when something goes wrong, that's what he's gonna fall back on again. So I'm just like, why are we telling the same story? We've read it, we've closed the book, let's move on. Judas had an, an interesting conversation. I don't know why I'm tripping over my words today. He had an interesting conversation in the kitchen with a few of the guys and essentially he was saying that his rejection um, from Katie does make him want her more. And the reason why it stuck out to me is because one, of course we know guys do love a challenge. If you make it hard for them, not too hard, but if you make it hard for them, they like to they like to feel like they can conquer this obstacle that you put in front of them, right? But it's also a good marker for women to understand that boundaries are okay to have. It is okay to say, that's not who I am. I'm not for that. And if you want to get with me, you got to get with what I'm about, you know? So to the women like Ella and Jess, like you don't have to keep proving yourself worthy to these men. Be you. Stand in who you are and somebody's going to come and be like, you know what? I like that. I like what you're about. And I'm going to step up to the plate and be the man that you deserve. Because if you let it be too easy, like Tyreek can do what he does because he knows Ella's always going to be there. Sammy can do what he does because he knows Jess is always going to be there. But if you stand your ground, you stand your ground, you say, these are my boundaries. They have to decide, okay. Am I gonna be up to the challenge and actually do what this woman is requiring me to do? Or am I gonna step back and say, listen, I'm not even that guy. Let me move on. I thought that was a great conversation. I wish some of the women were there to hear it. The next morning, quickly going through the debriefs. Um, the girls were encouraging Whitney to move on and her interests are Montel and Judas. However, Judas isn't to Katie. They think that they're getting closer. Okay. Uh, Catherine is happy and her couple with Scott. Sammy wants to make a move on Jess. Jess wants to make a move on Sammy. And so they have a conversation to see where they stand. At least it's not like I'm left here without any kind of connection. You are. Oh, am I? <laughs> okay. The way we walk about the villa and that, always like a bit of eye contact, a bit of flight, and then that, it's like, I was happy with Mal, but like, did still think about you a lot and did still have feelings for you, so. <sighs> Thank <laughs> you. 
Bring back Mal. Bring back Mal. <laughs> I would have rather seen Leah out this house. I'm sorry. And I saw I saw the TikToks that you guys were sending of Leah pre-show. A vibe. A vibe. I might understand this whole hair color as the personality thing because when she had dark hair, she was a vibe. The blonde hair, I don't know. I don't know what the peroxide did try, but, um, yeah, I just, I, why, why, why are they trying to get back together? It just, it doesn't, it doesn't make sense to me. Montel takes Whitney for a chat and I don't know if he was joking or not, but he literally admitted that he pities her. I don't want to see myself, steep. Are you pitying me? Yeah, a little bit. I want to be me. I want to be in control of my emotions, but I definitely don't want a man to shift how I feel. Just been going on for ages. It doesn't bother me like it bothers you. It looks really physical and fly. Whitney herself said she doesn't want to lead. And with Montel, she would be doing just that. And she would be doing just that. Girl, he is not it. I think they have great banter, like as homies, but it I, I just I just don't see it after that. I really don't. I really don't. And I found it rich how all the guys were trying to not even the guys, some of the girls too, were trying to wind up Leah saying, Oh, aren't you jealous about that? I know 80% of y'all would have a cow if your partner was entertaining a conversation with anybody who was not you. Let's not do that, okay? She was saving face in front of them. However, when she did talk to Montel, she was like, okay, but but what's really going on? How was your combo? Funny, funny combo. What do you mean, it's funny? It's just a funny combo that, they, that really just makes me laugh, and it? it's a funny combo. I'm sure she probably maybe wishes it, it could be, but I don't give her the... I don't give her enough for her to latch onto it, kind of thing. The way I speak to her, I make it, I make it very clear. So I'm sitting there chatting to her about you and it. Oh. Yeah. I am convinced. I am personally convinced. He don't like her, and as much as I don't think he likes Whitney, I, I also don't think he likes Leah. Not like that. Not in the long term. You know, I think Leah is Madame Exam for him too. It's only that. He doesn't have many options. There is unfinished business there with Catherine. Every time you see Montel and he's not tied to Leah, he's talking to Catherine. I think that there's something there, but because she's in good with Scott, he can't really go there. And I think there was an inkling of him that wanted to see if there was something there with Ella, but she's tied to Tyreek, you know? So, Casa? Yeah, I, th I think his head would turn. I think her head would turn too but his head would definitely turn. In the evening, the couples are thrown a dinner party and the chefs are Whitney and Sammy because they are single. Get Sammy out of the kitchen. Should I put all that in at once or shall I put that break up? <gasps> Just drown me. Whereby they won't even be able to see it. I put my little spin on it and made it, um, I called it pasta mash. What the fuck is this? This looks like run belly. This looks like food poisoning no thank you no thank you like I, mm -mm -mm. spaghetti mash what is spaghetti mash what is that call the medic i can only take note of a few conversations because some of them went by so quick but katie who was a vet in this situation is falling for the games of judas and i'm like girl haven't you been here before how are you falling for this we've been training a lot together today mm. Hmm. Throughout getting to know you, has been very nice. This is technically my fifth date, fifth person. I'll teach you, young one. <laughs> do, if we have an argument, never bring up my age. I do not understand how she doesn't see the game. I do not get how she doesn't see it. And then thankfully, later on, there was a there was a conversation lull and it got really awkward. And he said, oh, he does like to talk a lot. And then they just went dead silent. And I'm like, yeah, thank you. Because it's just, it's not, it's not working. It is not working. There's something that Judas said and he's like, if we do get together, you need to not bring up my age. And I'm with that. I am with that. If you date somebody who's significantly older or significantly younger, which he's not, whatever. If age is a factor in your relationship, if it's gonna be a trip on your shoulder where you bring it up all the time, then don't even pursue it. That's my personal opinion. There is nothing I can change about the year I came onto this earth. So you let it go or you let me go. Ty is taking a temperature check. Ty is taking a temperature check. 
<laughs> with Ella seeing if she's going to turn her head if new people come in. We're not together and that, but I think your head got turned. We're closed off, so why would my head even turn? Like, everything is good between us, and I just wanted to say like that, and that's how it's supposed to be. If you just want to be a fuckboy, then mm -hmm. you can be a fuckboy elsewhere. <laughs> I think I realize what bothers me about Ella. Ella listens to Ty, picks out the parts that are the most flattering and runs with it. And it's not to say that Ty said anything that was too alarming in this conversation, but I'm like, these are the moments where you can be inquisitive. He's asking you, who he's closed off with allegedly, if your head is gonna turn. And for you, you say, well, no, we're closed off. That is the moment where you ask him what closed off means to him. And a lot of the cases as human beings, we love to project. So we put things on other people where typically it would be us doing that thing, but we don't want to take the onus for that, right? So yeah, he's asking this question because, let me not say because, I feel he is asking this question because there's a there's an inkling of him that's like, well, if somebody came in, my head would kind of turn. I'm not even gonna lie to you. So I'm like, girl, ask the questions. Don't be letting, you know, the face the charm, the words get you, ask this man, put him on the flame and let's see how he fares. After the dates, um, Sammy and Jess pick up where they left off and they're trying to see if they can get back to where they were. You happy, y'all? No? Are you happy, y'all? It's nice to be talking to you again. There's definitely no like weirdness there. Oh, is there not? Not from my point oh, of view might... anyway. There might be from yours. We, we have the chance to sort of pick up where we left off now. And yeah, I mean, it's, it's de it was definitely unfinished business there. All that I ask, all that I ask is if they do this again, Sammy does not treat Jess as if he is doing her a favor by being with him, her, her, by being with her. Yeah, that's all that I ask. If it doesn't work out, that's fine. Relationships end. But don't make it this thing of like, I was the prize. You were lucky to be with me. D like, I just, I hate, oh, I cannot stand it. I just cannot stand it. If he's not going to pursue her genuinely, just don't pursue her at all. Then the episode ends with Judas and Whitney. And I'm just like, I saw it coming. You know, when they did that, um, that red card challenge, she wanted to see what the hype was about. They actually did kiss at the heart rate challenge. They chopped it up a little bit, but you can see that there was a kiss in there. Like, it's been brewing, so I'm not completely shocked. I like this outfit today. You look good. Thank you. Nude vibes. Tan. You know what? Brown. I love brown, you know. You be lurking in the corners. Why I'm, are you I be must... lurking? Why are you not straight I up? Know. After you, I feel like, I don't know. How come you be kissing me in challenges? Like... Why not? Why, is that bad? But you be treating me real special. Do you feel like our conversation I put a spanner on your work? This has been a good conversation, to be honest. Definitely a good conversation. Let's have another one tomorrow. I actually think that when it comes to lifestyle, their connection works better than his other connections and even hers. Her and Mehdi in the real world, who knows if they were gonna work out, but I highly doubt that it would have. Um, and then even with Judas, I don't think him and Molly would roam in the same circles. I don't think so. I also don't think that he and Katie would roam in the same circles. Maybe he and Catherine, but even Catherine, she's she's... Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. I think that it makes more sense with Whitney, but I, like I said, I like to put myself in Whitney and I think that Whitney is a lover girl and Judas is saying that he wants to be a lover boy, but as of right now, he is not. He is not. So if Whitney is okay with the game, all right, girl. All right. But if she's not ready for the game, then Judas is not the one to pursue. I'll tell you that for free. I don't know why they didn't give us a tomorrow night. It better be the fact that Casa's coming and they want it to be like the element of surprise, even though we don't know the timelines. Um, Casa better be on the way because these lovey-dovey episodes, I'm tired. I've had enough. I want, I want some drama. I want some excitement. I want some chaos. Thank you.